Once again, the activists you pay for over at the ABC's Media Watch have deceptively attacked a journalist, tried to damage this station and denied their audiences essential facts in a way that is misleading and against the charter and purpose of the public broadcaster. Media Watch host Paul Barry, who is a relentless warrior on Twitter when it comes to climate change, alarmism and News Corp paranoia, he spent a lot of time, and with his team of 10, a lot of taxpayers' resources last night, running another hit job that would have pleased his Twitter crowd and the communist leaders in Beijing. Your taxes at work. I'll show you some of that in a moment. Barry is the highest-paid television host in the nation per minute on air, and he seems determined to undermine the journalism of Sky News host and investigative reporter for The Australian, Sherry Markson. As you know, Sherry has broken a number of stories about the possible origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Quite an important story, wouldn't you say? Sherry has demonstrated that there is considerable evidence the virus might have leaked accidentally from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which has been involved in coronavirus research, including military research on biological weapons. Sherry has revealed repeatedly that US intelligence agencies and other governments, including our own, remain open-minded about this possibility and want it thoroughly investigated. Yet last year, Barry, the ABC and Media Watch decided they knew better and that Beijing's line about bats in wet markets was the unquestionable truth. So, given all those expert doubts, was this sensational treatment really justified? Batman! Exclusive! We think not. We also think Markson should have told readers that almost every virus expert had dismissed the lab escape theory. And we believe this get-out in the middle of the story that the telly's not suggesting the two scientists were responsible for the outbreak is insufficient. Well, I believe Barry's sharing and airing of the facts is insufficient. Undeterred by these anti-journalism attacks, Shari has continued to investigate this issue and will publish a book on the topic later this year. All the while, her research has only increased the evidence, pointing to the possibility that the global pandemic originated from an accidental laboratory leak. This month, she's revealed a document that helps to build this case. And the main criticism from Barry and Media Watch last night seems to be that the document was available publicly if you knew where to look on the Chinese internet. Maybe the ABC should have found it first. Instead, Media Watch found plenty of the usual China experts who are very familiar with the Beijing regime and are also willing to criticise Shari's reporting. This Sydney Morning Herald analysis on Thursday had several other China experts voicing their doubts, including the Lowy Institute's Richard McGregor, who pointed out... It is not secret and has been up on the internet for at least five years, which tells you immediately that it doesn't contain hypersensitive information as far as Beijing is concerned. And yet more China experts took aim at Markson's scoop in another takedown by The Guardian, headlined... News Corp exclusive on Chinese bioweapons based on discredited 2015 book of conspiracy theories, criticised as misleading and alarmist by China analysts. Well, so what? I won't go into all the key facts that the ABC knows but deliberately keeps from the public in these stories, but what the ABC did not did not tell their viewers and deliberately did not tell their viewers on the central fact, the main argument of Sherry's, Sherry's reporting, is that even the Sydney Morning Herald has had to do a backflip. Last year, they said it was an unfounded conspiracy theory that the virus could have leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But just last week, while attacking Sherry again, they admitted that officials in the US and the Australian governments put the probability of a leak as high as 40%, while a natural virus from an animal host was rated about a 60% chance. So there you have it. Sherry's reporting has only ever said that this was a possibility that warranted serious investigation. And now, even her critics admit that what they once called a conspiracy theory, an unfounded conspiracy theory, is now a 40% chance of being the reality. Of course, it might be even more likely. 
And then there's this article published in Science magazine in which 18 of the world's leading virologists call for an open international investigation of the origins of the virus, declaring that accidental release from a lab and zoonotic or animal spillover both remain viable scenarios. That's the science. That's the question that needs to be answered. The lab accident theory remains plausible and of keen interest to the most prominent scientists in the world. It's one of the most important stories in the world at the moment. But it's a story the ABC does not want Australians to even know about because Paul Barry and his team of in-house anti-journalists would rather waste their time and your money throwing pathetic barbs at Sherry Markson, a female journalist daring to probe the truth of the matter, no matter how much it angers Beijing or, apparently, the ABC.